Hi everyone, this is a tutorial for a response to Louis Jova using Photopia. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to find the image that I want to work with, and that's going to be Andy Warhol, just as it is here. Uh, and I've already found one off Google and I just need to uh, open it up. And I need to remove the background. So I'm going to use my magnetic lasso tool. And I'm going to keep clicking around the points. Now I could zoom in on this, it would make it a lot easier. Um, but for the sake of just doing this quite quickly to show, um, it doesn't matter too much. But with you guys, when you're making your responses to get the absolute best out of it, I would personally zoom in and get every single sort of nook and cranny in there. Okay, control C, control V. And you can see now we've got that uh, in its own separate layer. So I need to save this now as a Photoshop file. So file, export as, and I'm going to do it as a PNG. And hopefully that will mean that this background is still transparent. When we've got that, uh, this gray and white checkered background, it means it's uh, still transparent. So we'll save it and we'll come out of that. And we'll do a new A4 sheet of paper. So file, new. Um, if you click down the bottom at print, you automatically get the correct measurements and just click create. And you've got your A4 sheet of paper there. I now need to place that image that I have just worked on, which is here. Let me just open it up and save it somewhere where I'm going to remember. File, open and place. Just drag this out. Obviously, we've got quite a rough bottom part here, so I am going to get rid of that by placement of it. And just drag it using my shift key to keep it in resolution. OK, and when I'm happy with that, just press enter. OK, I'm now going to break down the face. So as you can see here, we've got the face in different segments. So that's what I'm going to do next. It's really helpful, actually, as well, if you open up uh, the example of Lou Jova's work uh, in a new tab. So if you just file open and then you can switch between the two tabs. Uh, so you've got this here for reference. So using my rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to slice or chop the top of Warhol's head off. So I've dragged a box around it. I'm now going to use my move tool, my mouse tool, and it works. Ah, I need to rasterize the layer. That'll be why. Rasterize. Use my move tool. And there's the head there. I'm now going to draw another box around the other side of the face. I'm going to select my move tool and move that as well. I'm now going to cut out the eye uh, as a circle. Again, using this as reference. So I hold down my rectangular marquee tool and select, drop it down to the ellipse tool. Hold my shift key. Just drag. Do that again. So hold my shift key down, just drag that circle over the face, select my move tool, and then move the eye. And then I need to delete this part. So drag a box over it and quite literally on the keyboard hit delete. Okay. So now I've got my features that I want to work with. To remove that uh, mask tool, the dotted line, just um, click it and select click anywhere on the on the screen and it will get rid of that. OK, um, I want to enhance the brightness and contrast of this. Hopefully you've already turned your image black and white. It should be. If not, it's image adjustment black and white. Uh, and I'm going to just remove some of those silvery tones and bring out the more darker blacks and brighter whites. I'm just going to up my contrast ever so slightly. 
don't think it needs anything doing with the brightness, but yours might, so tweak it if necessary. Okay, first thing we're going to do is create some circles. So I'm going to go back to the example on here, and you can see there's loads of circles going on here. Uh, I'm going to select one of the colours that Louis Jova has worked with. So over here, this will probably be your crop tool. Okay, that's the fourth one down. If you hold that down, you'll get the eyedropper tool. So select that. And then just hover it over the colour that you want to steal from the piece of artwork. In this case, it's this like mint green kind of colour. And just click it. And then you'll see that that colour has automatically transferred into your colour palette over here. So if I jump back to my work, I've still got that colour selected. I'm going to select the ellipse uh, marquee tool. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to draw a couple of circles. of all different sizes. And I'm going to fill those in with the colour. So on your tool panel, your gradient tool, if you hold that down, you'll get the paint bucket. And just click inside one of the circles and it will fill them all. OK, to now lose this, uh, what I normally call marching ants, uh, click the select tool and just hit anywhere on the screen and it will go. OK, I'm now going to turn my colour palette black and white back to the original. So just click that little black square down there. Next up, we are going to use the pencil tool to create some straight lines. So we've got loads of these going on in here and I really want to have that as reference in my work. So that is under the paintbrush. So hold the paintbrush and get your pencil tool. Create a new layer. So that's this post-it note down here. Hit that and you'll automatically get your new layer. It's really important that we work on as many layers as possible. So if it goes wrong, we can just throw it straight in the bin and start again. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to do, I'm going to click. Uh, so I've selected my pencil tool and I've clicked. And I'm going to hit shift. So I've pressed shift and hit my mouse at the same time after I've clicked and I've automatically got that line. And now if I go back and hold in my key and just click in. If you get that pop up, just click no. It doesn't like you holding the shift key down for longer than five seconds. So I'm going to go back over here, join up that line. So click and shift and press my mouse and I get that again. And I'm going to do the same again I'm over here. OK. Now, at the moment, I'm not keen with it on top of that circle, but that's absolutely fine. I can then move that layer behind the circle. OK, so for now, because I'm working on, I'm just going to keep that layer there. I'm going to do the same now um, on the same layer, but from this eye here. So again, I'm going to get right from the pupil and click, hold down my shift key, click again, go back. Click, hold down my shift key, click again. Click. Hold down my shift key, click again. And again, we've got that pop up, just click no. And click. I want these lines to join up and that will explain why in a minute. So click, hold my shift key and click again. OK, I now need to join all of these lines up. So I'm pressing control plus and that just zooms in. So I can now click, shift, click, click, shift. Click, shift. OK, and that's that's joined those up and that, that's perfect. That's what we want. OK, I'm happy with that for now. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and drag this layer behind. OK, so now because we joined up those layers, I hide that, this bit here, that means that we can fill this with individual colour and it won't bleed out. If these lines were left open, the colour would bleed out into the background. But this is um, trapping it, keeping the colour in there, um, which is what we want. So I'm just going to jump back to my Louis Jova and I'm going to steal another colour. So get my eyedropper tool. I'm going to take this orange, go back to my work. And I'm going to fill this bit here and this bit here. And this has worked fine here because it's it's over the edge of the page. I made sure my lines went over the edge of the page. So it's automatically just assumed that this is the edge, that this is blocked for the colour. 
Is that back? Okay, I'm happy with that for now. I'm now going to add a little bit of text. So make sure my, my colors are black. Again, using this as reference, we've got AW, that's Andy Warhol's initials. Uh, so I'm going to use that as inspo. So my, select my text tool. Just going to put that to 150 for now. That's the size of the font. And I want a, um, a serif font. So I want something quite traditional. So serif, to remind you, is something that has feet. This is a really good example. It's got feet. This is a sans serif. It doesn't have a foot at the bottom of the P. This does. So I want a serif font for this. Drag my text box. I'm just going to do a capital A. Now that is obviously far too small. So if I just highlight it with my mouse, I can then manually type in, uh, make it about 400. Enter. I think that's still a little bit too small for my liking. So let's make it 600 and enter. And that's fine. Click your mouse tool just to come out of that. And you can move that text and ensure it's on the correct layer if you want it over the top. So I'm going to pop it there. OK, new layer. This tool is uh, similar to the pencil tool. So it's the pen tool, which is over here. Um, this is a bit more fiddly. OK, so we click the pen tool at the top. We turn off the fill. We don't want to fill it. So that's why we've got this cross. It says no, no fill. However, we do want the stroke. The stroke is the outline. So I'm going to select that as black. You can change it to any other color, but I want it black. OK, and you will probably automatically have it as just a solid line. So just change that to dashes or dots. I'm going to use dashes. So I've clicked on the left hand side over here. I'm then going to click on hold down my shift key and click again and hold that. And as I'm holding it, I'm dragging my mouse down. Now, this is fiddly. It will take you a bit of time. Don't worry if it goes wrong. If it goes wrong, you just delete that layer. So I'm just trying to get a nice curve. And when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to right click on that layer. And I'm rasterizing it. So I'm turning, turning it into its own shape. So rasterize. And what we've got now is this dotted line going across the page. OK, so that's another bit of reference in there from the artist. We've got some curved dashes, we've got some straight edges. Um, next up, we're going to have a go at doing a shape, pattern shape like this. So go back to your work. Just make sure your uh, color palette is black. Go grab your ellipse tool. New layer. And hold down your shift key and drag your circle. So whatever size it is you're wanting, move it to place it somewhere else if you're wanting it elsewhere. And when you're happy with it, we we'll just fill it with black paint. OK, so for this one, I am going to zoom in. So I've pressed my control plus. There we go. OK, now we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool. So just select that. And I'm going to draw some thin lines. Um, and just taking note of the width. So at the minute, that's 35. Remember that, 35. Hit delete. And then I'm going to draw another one. And it also needs to be 35 or there or thereabouts. Hit delete. I should probably throw one over here as well. That's probably from about here. So making sure my width is 35. That went slightly under, but it's not a problem. Just hit delete. And you would repeat that going right across the circle over and over. Try and keep the distance, the black distance, the same throughout. I haven't there. I can move that over a little bit. Delete. Roughly 35 in the width so that it stays roughly the same. Delete. Delete. I'm going to stop there, but you would obviously continue and keep going. So that's one way of making that shape 
similar to over here. And you could probably do that as well by filling these with colour and using that tool to also delete sections of it as well. Okay, so zoom out with that. Actually, that looks quite nice with the, with the block there as well. Um, another one that you can do is use your ellipse marquee tool, hold down your shift key, um, new layer. And fill it. Zoom in. And then you can use your paintbrush tool. So hold the pencil down, set your brush. At the top, you've got different um, brush tips. We want a solid round brush. And when you hover over, it gives you an idea of the size. So at the minute that says 19, and then I'm hovering over. You can see that's probably a little bit too small. So let's just make it a bit bigger. That's probably a bit too big for me. That's probably about perfect there. OK, so uh, swap your colours over. You want this to be white. And add some carefully placed. Don't just sort of do them. Try and make it look like a pattern with them. Again, to lose those marching ants, just select your marquee tool and just click anywhere. Zoom out. And again, you can play around with the layers if you want it behind the way you've placed it, or you know, you just lay, play around with them. These are essentially sheets of tracing paper, and it's up to you which order you put them in. So I've already um, downloaded a couple of images to use. So as you can see here, um, Louis Jova has used um, like this butterfly transfer, some sort of doodles. Uh, we've got a tea splat stain there, arrows. So what I've done is I've Googled a couple of bits that I'm going to place into mine, and you could do the same. I, I haven't gone as far as these splats, but if you wanted to, you could quite easily find them, source them online. Um, so go back to your work and file, open and place. So I've used a paintbrush. Now, you should be able to see that that paintbrush has got this sort of different tone background, a grey background. It's a plain background, which makes this easier. Um, it's a grey background, so I need to delete that. So what I'm going to do is make it a little bit smaller. Holding down my shift key. Just going to move it over here where there's not much going on. And press enter. So if I click my magic wand tool. And just select click with my mouse, you can see now it's got those marching ants around it. Uh, so it's detected that different colour background on my keyboard. Just click delete. I need to rasterize the layer, so right click, rasterize, that means edit uh, and delete. So I've now removed that color background, which means, oops, I don't know what that line is, which means I should now be able to move my paintbrush, there it is. Okay, so if I move it up a layer, I want it above the, the body, I can now we've lost that background and I can place it where I want. I want to make it bigger or smaller or rotate it, I press Control Alt T. Alt T and I should be able to. I don't know where the box has gone, but normally you'd be there would be a box around it and you'd be able to make it bigger, smaller, rotate it. And I think whatever I've done with this weird funky line has prevented that from happening. So I'm happy with the place. Placement of the paintbrush there. Next thing I'm going to add is my arrow. So open and place. Find my arrow. There it is. Again, you can see we've got this box around it. So I need to rasterize the layer. Right click, rasterize. Hold down my magic wand tool. Select, delete, select, delete, select, delete. And that's got rid of all of the space around it. Um, Going back to the work, I'm going to take the same colour that Jova's used. So use my um, eyedropper tool. Click the colour I want to borrow. Go back to my work. Use my paint bucket tool. And just colour in that arrow. Um, I can then add a black outline if I wanted to by right clicking on the layer. Blending options. And click stroke. And you can change 
size of that stroke. We don't want it too thick. We can make it thin. Probably about there is good for me. Click OK and then move it to wherever you want it to be placed and control alt t hold down your shift key you can make it bigger smaller longer however it is uh, or rotate it round or you could just right click on it and you've got this flip vertically flip horizontally flip 180 etc I'm just going to put mine as straight as I can. Probably about there. Click OK. Make that a bit small. A little bit smaller. Control one P. And just move it. Are you happy with it? Press Enter. And then you could just keep building it up. So they're all the basics that I've shown you. So we've used the, um, the eyedropper tool, we've used the paintbrush, we've used the pencil, we've used the pen, we've used the paint bucket, stroke, um, loads of different techniques and skills in this. So I wouldn't say this is finished. I think in comparison, there's loads more going on here, lots more lines. Um, so explore and experiment away, but this is your basics of that. And when you're happy with it, save it as a JPEG um, and, and print it out. And that's the tutorial for Louis Jover uh, response on Photopia.